From this, an archaeologist can see a long gone village. Likewise, there's a larger story at this ancient burial mound, and archaeologists at the National Park Service think they know what it is. Based on all our work on ring middens in North Florida over the last 20 years, we realized that wherever there is a mound, there should be a ring midden next to it, a village associated with it. And no one had ever found one near the Spring Creek Mound. And so we just went looking for it. In the St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge, these researchers predict the location of a new site to excavate. It starts with finding trash. When I got in the business about 40 years ago, people called shell middens and garbage dumps villages. And I never, I couldn't quite understand why they called them villages. They're just garbage dumps. It might be the garbage dump of the village, but why are you calling that the village? And that's because archaeologists can only, or typically only, look at uh, material remains to identify what the site might have been. So I just started inventing a methodology where every few feet, systematically, I would go across an area near a midden to see what the shape of the midden actually was and to see where the empty spaces were. We believe it's where people were living in a circular pattern and throwing their garbage out behind the house. And you would uh, cook your meals inside the ring. You would communicate with other people inside the rings. You would have dances inside the ring. You would communicate in the ring and have uh, festivals and that kind of stuff. It's, it's typical of any village. When we did this one shovel pass after another, we found that once we started connecting the dots of where Midden was and wasn't, they all started forming ring shapes along the coast. And just outside the Midden was usually a burial mound, which brings us to Spring Creek. In this case, we had a known burial mound, the Spring Creek Mound, that was excavated about a century ago by Clarence Moore. But nobody had identified a ring midden in, uh, in that area. And so based on our experience at similar sites, we were hypothesizing that there should be a ring midden there. So we decided to start shovel testing in the area, beginning around the mound, and sort of working out in a spiral. And eventually, we did hit midden. So it looks like uh, right around here is where the, the midden soil is ending. And you can see that up here it's full of shell and it's very dark. And then uh, down here, um, you know, it's a much lighter color. And I can, I can compare it right there on my trowel, the difference in the color. So the tree that fell down here, this gives you an idea of what the sand out here should look like. So that midden soil is black because of decomposing organic material. Dead fish, deer carcasses, who knows what all they dumped in there. Doing our shovel tests at tighter intervals. We began at 40 meters, we brought that down to 20 meters, and then every 10 meters right around the midden so that we can get a very exact map of where the site is on the ground. And so far it's turning out to be not a full circle, but something like a C shape which is not uncommon for these, for these sites. Yeah, unfortunately, I broke it a little bit, but uh, that's a big piece. Yeah. That's... yeah. So what, from what animal is this poop? Do we know? Um, I mean, I would guess human, because right. it was in midden soil yeah. with uh, right. uh, refuse, so we had oyster shell and fish bone. Uh, amongst and above and below this, so I believe that it probably is human. These are still fresh enough. I say fresh, it's 1,500 <laughs> years old. They're still new enough that we should possibly be able to get some information out of it. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, get some complicated stamp. This has got a nice like bullseye pattern to it. That's so cool. So this is Swift Creek. As we talked about, they have the, the stamped pottery. And that's how we know this is a Swift Creek site. Swift Creek people stamp their pottery with paddles like this one. Shells, dirt, and even human poop are as much a part of this story as arrowheads and pots. But only if all of those things are found together in the ground and properly recorded. Context is everything when it comes to archaeology. Finding an artifact out of context can often give you some information. You know, you know a little bit about it, but if you don't know where it comes from, and more specifically, if you don't know where it is in relation to other artifacts, that really prevents you from being able to tease out the story. What we're after, though, is the information that site contains. That means we have to record everything very meticulously. We get one shot to get it right. Everything has to be recorded. We've got to be able to recreate that site uh, with the, the notes that we take and the photographs that we take and the records that we make of it so that we can go back and piece that site together. 
Unfortunately, many sites have had their context compromised by looting. This is one of the things we found here when we first came out to the site. This is, this is a screen, a makeshift screen that was used by uh, artifact collectors, pot hunters, that come and loot these sites. There's not a single burial mound in uh, North Florida that hasn't been looted. Even though a lot has been taken from these sites, archaeologists have been able to start to piece together a story of the Swift Creek and Whedon Island people. The Swift Creek and the Whedon Island ringmen are only recently being discovered. We have found so many uh, now that we're writing a National Historic Landmark theme study and we hope to nominate those sites, at least some of those sites in the future, to receive the full protection of the National Historic Landmark Program. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.